In my last two videos about back button focusing and birds in flight, we already talked a lot about the autofocus system of our cameras. So today I thought I want to round out this series of three videos by talking about our autofocus systems and how we can set them up the best way to get the most nice and sharp images. When it comes to setting up my camera, I like to keep it really simple. When I'm in the field, I hate if I have to change a lot of settings and modes on the camera. If I'm out and about, I want to focus on taking great bird pictures and the birds themselves and not having to worry about my camera. So that's why I use back button autofocusing because with the simple change to back button autofocusing, I can use one shot and IR servo in the same mode, negating the need for me to swap between the two modes. And I've done the same with my autofocus system. I found and adjusted a case that works 95% of the time for me, so I don't have to worry about what case or what setting to choose when I'm out in the field. I just know what I've dialed in now works almost all the time. If you're using a DSLR camera and want to start setting up your autofocus, the first thing you should do is use a calibration tool like this to make sure that your autofocus actually functions in the right way. These tools allow you, in combination with the micro adjustment on the back of the camera in the menu of your camera, to adjust the point your camera actually focuses on. A lot of times when you get your camera and combine it with a new lens, it doesn't necessarily focus exactly where you want it to. So sometimes it focuses slightly behind or in front of the point you actually want to focus on and you need to micro adjust it to the point where it actually needs to focus on. So this is where this tool comes into play. You set it up, line it all up over here and then your camera focuses on here and on this little scale over here you can see exactly where the camera focuses. So if it focuses a bit too far in the back, all these numbers will be sharp and the zero will be not as sharp. If it focuses in the front, the numbers in the front will be sharper and the numbers in the back will be blurry. And to get it perfect, you change the micro adjustment until you focus on the zero and there's kind of the same amount in the front and the back that is covered with your depth of field and sharpness. And then you know that you can now start to get out and actually set up your autofocus. So now it's time to get into the more finer details of our autofocusing system. I'm shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV and on the back of the camera I can select different autofocus cases and different settings that affect how my autofocus tracks my subjects in the AI server mode. If you're using a different camera model, all these things will be slightly different, but I think the basic ideas will be the same, where you can adjust the sensitivity of how your camera reacts to different things happening in your frame while you're tracking a subject and while you're trying to take your photos. So there's five cases and each of the five cases has three different settings that we can affect. The first one is the tracking sensitivity. That tells the camera how quickly you want it to jump onto a new subject when it enters the frame. If you set it to a low setting, your camera will try to stay with the subject that you initially focused on. And if you set it to a very high setting, your camera will be quite jumpy and instantly jumping on new things entering your frame. So generally, I think having that on a kind of lower setting can work quite well. The problem is once your camera jumps onto the background, it's also very hard to get off your background. So you can't have it on the lowest settings or you just have to try around because if you have it too low, it might get stuck somewhere and it's hard to get off. You just have to refocus again completely and that can be quite annoying. The second setting, the acceleration or deceleration, tells your camera how quickly you want it to focus on something else if your subject suddenly stops or accelerates. So if you have a bird that's kind of flying slowly but suddenly goes into a dive, on the slow setting, the camera is likely kind of jump onto your background because it tries to keep tracking with the same speed. Whereas on a higher setting, the bird changes the speed, the focusing will try to stay on the subject even if it changes the speed dramatically. And the last setting is only relevant if we're having multiple autofocus points or expansion zones activated, and that's the switching between the autofocus points. So that setting basically tells the camera how quickly you want it to swap from one autofocus point to the next. So with all these cases, what we really have to do is find a setting that works for us for most of the time. I've tried all the different cases and the different settings for many days in a row when I was shooting at a water spot. The case that I've found to work the best for me is case one. I've tried all the other cases as well, but I figured for my style of photography, mainly perch birds with the occasional flight shot, this seems to work the best. 
but I've made changes to case one. So I've changed the tracking sensitivity from zero to minus one, meaning it's a little bit less jumpy and doesn't change between subjects entering the frame too quickly. So if I'm focused on a bird that's perched and there's another bird flying past that bird, it won't try to instantly jump on that bird. It kind of tries to stay on the bird that I've focused on. The acceleration and deceleration are also changed from zero to minus one, making the focus slightly less jumpy and not trying too quickly to focus on something else when the bird is moving around or flapping its wings or something. And lastly, the switching between the autofocus point I adjusted as well and I actually went from the zero setting that is the standard to one. So I actually have the camera switching between the points a little bit faster because when the bird is moving or it's moving from the left to the right, moving the head around, it's probably good if the camera kind of keeps track of it rather than having the one point still activated and that zooming right onto the background when the head of the bird turns to the side. And also for flight shots, it's even more true if the bird's flying fast through your frame, you don't want your camera to stick to the one point too much. No, you rather want to have it jump between the two points. So if you're moving, the bird is moving, you're not losing track of it. I think what's important to note with all these cases is that there's not necessarily the perfect case for everyone. I've played around with them for a long time and found the case that works for me most of the time, the one that I've just described and showed to you. But that doesn't mean that that's necessarily best case for you as well. It really depends on your subject and your shooting style as well. If you're mainly doing flight shots, you probably want your focus to be a little bit more aggressive. But if you're doing a lot of perched birds or birds with high contrast backgrounds like I do, I don't want my focus to be too jumpy or too aggressive because then it often just jumps onto the background. That's really something that I don't want. So I would recommend to maybe start off with something similar to my settings. And then go out, take a few test shots, photograph a few birds and see if you like what's happening. If you always feel like your camera is too slow or it's a little bit too jumpy, then adjust the settings accordingly. Personally, for instance, I ended up using case one, but two of the first settings I just found a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too jumpy. So I dialed those back. Should you use just one autofocus point? or have surrounding points activated as well. Generally, I'd say for perch birds, we just want a small area activated, whereas for birds in flight, it's good to have one point activated and at the very least, the surrounding points activated or activate some sort of zone. However, I've also had decent success with having the one autofocus point and then the surrounding points activated even for perch birds. I might set it to just one autofocus point when I know I'm only photographing perch birds and they're not going to move much. But if I'm not sure what's going to happen, there might be some action, lots of moving birds. I always like to have some of the surrounding points activated because it gives me greater flexibility and allows the camera to stay on the subject even if it's moving. If I just have one autofocus point activated, I'm also running the risk that the bird just turns away and the focus goes straight onto your background and that's something we really don't want. So what setting would I recommend for you? I would probably say have one autofocus point activated and then the four or five surrounding points activated as well. It's a more versatile setting and slightly gives you more scope for error when focusing on the bird. Unless the bird is like this small in your frame because then there's too many points that are kind of trying to fight with one another and your camera is not really sure what you're focusing on. Then it definitely helps to just have the one point activated because I don't like to shoot wide open for birds and usually use f8, I also have slightly more scope for error when it comes to autofocusing because my depth of field is a little bit larger. If you're shooting at f2.8, your autofocus has to be bang on the exact spot you want to focus on. But if you're shooting it at f8 or f11 sometimes like I do, you have a little bit more scope for the focus being slightly off but the bird's head still being sharp. So that's another reason why I do like shooting stop down. I also made a video about that because it increases the depth of field, gives me more of the bird and focus and slightly increases my margin for error when it comes to the focusing. So I've deactivated all my zones from being selectable by the camera because I feel like a large zone or all points activated just doesn't work for me. I do need that control to be able to have the focus on the bird's head. Even for flight shots with the birds flying past me, all the autofocus points activated, it's just difficult to stay on the bird's head and 
oftentimes the camera will jump onto the wing just because it has more contrast and it's moving up and down. So that's why I like to select just a certain area so I can kind of make sure I'm staying on the bird's head. So now we've talked so much about the different molds and the different points and surrounding points. Which point should we actually be using? Generally speaking, I would say whichever point is the closest to the bird's head. Because for bird photography, it's the most important to have a sharp eye and a sharp head. If you have like a sharp wing and the bird's head's not sharp, the photo just won't look right at all. So having that sharp eye, that sharp focus on the bird's head is crucially important. And I usually get that by selecting the autofocus point that's the closest to that area. The only limitation is that a lot of our cameras have a center focus point that is slightly better, especially in low light, compared to some of the surrounding points. So that's why in low light I sometimes resort to the, using the center focusing point, or when I'm not sure what is happening, I'm not sure which direction the bird is coming from, I'm also usually starting off with the center focusing point. But if I have a bird perch in front of me where I can see it's sitting right there, I want to choose a point that's the closest to the bird's head. If I was using the center focusing point all the time, I will have to do a lot of recomposing because I'm focusing on the bird's head, then recomposing my shot. That takes a little while and at that time the bird may have moved its head around already, I lost focus and I have to redo it again. So in that case, I would activate one of the higher points to either side, trying to be as close to the bird's eyes possible. So ideally I can just focus on it, take my shot without much recomposing at all. For flight shots, I would generally recommend to use the center autofocusing point because often with the birds in flight, we don't really know from which direction they're coming, what is happening. The only time I would use a different autofocusing point than the center one when it comes to birds in flight is when I can see a clear pattern in the bird's flight path. They're always coming from here, flying that way, and they're kind of large in my frame. It probably makes sense to activate a focusing point that's further over to this side because then I can make sure that my focus stays on the bird's head. If I was using the center point, I'm more prone to focusing like on the bird's body or the bird's wing and that's not what we want. So if I can see a clear pattern or have a bird that's perched, I would always make sure that I pick a point that's the closest to the bird's head. If I'm not sure what's happening or if I'm in low light, I would usually resort to using the center autofocusing point. There's also another awesome feature on Canon cameras at least on my 5D Mark IV and that's orientation linked autofocus that I would highly recommend to turn on. It means I can select an autofocus point for the vertical and an autofocus point for the horizontal. So whenever I turn my camera to vertical, it will jump to the last point that was activated when I had it in vertical mode. So what I usually do when I go out, I select a high point up in the frame for vertical. So when I turn around my camera, I have one of the upper points activated. So that will be on the bird's head when I turn my camera and take a vertical shot. And then for the horizontal shot, I will have a different point activated, either the one in the middle or also one of the upper points closer to the bird's head. So that has helped me tremendously not having to swap between the points all the time because simply by turning the camera, I will have a point activated that's near the bird's head. How's your out of focus setup? Are you always using the center point? Are you using just one point or are you using a zone or the surrounding points activated? What case are you using? Can you actually select cases on your camera? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a discussion about it and love to hear all the different cases that you're using. And maybe you have some new ideas and inputs for me that I'm not even aware of. I'd love to hear about it. So let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate if you give me a like for this video, subscribe to my channel over there, check out some of the other content I've prepared for you over here. And I will see you in one of my next videos. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.